Oh, yeah. And now, our feature presentation. The purpose for marriage is the multiplication of the human species. You may say, well, we don't need marriage to multiply. I'm not married and I have several. <laughs> but look at the condition that you and the several are in. See? This is not the way God intended. Almighty God did not intend for a woman to help to multiply the human species and be a sorrowful woman with several babies, no man around, no protector, no provider around. Here you are with all of these children in a strange, hard, cold world. That's not the way God intended. And it is this free love, this just giving of yourself, sisters, and this taking of her brothers because of an urge that nature put in us. That urge is not bad. God created the urge. He created a sexual hunger in man for the woman and in the woman for the man. But that hunger has to be fed on a proper basis. See, and the test of the character of the male and the female is, can you fast until the right meal is in front of you? <laughs> See, and I, I respectfully suggest that most of us don't even think about fasting or castrating those desires because once we are up with the desire, we are looking for somebody to fulfill the desire with. We don't care who the person is. We don't care. We make no commitment to the person. It's just a, 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 an evening out and I'll see you later. That's an animal existence. That is not a human existence. That is a low rating experience and it cheapens you as a woman and it cheapens you as a man and it does not give us the proper chance to develop the God nature, the God character and the God spirit. Having a woman like that is cheapening and degrading to us as men of God. It is degrading to the woman. No man should lie with a woman unless that man has first made a commitment to that woman. And I don't mean just me and you, baby. I mean a serious commitment. And that commitment revolves around duty and obligation. That man has an obligation to you and you have an obligation to that man. And I don't want a woman who's not obligated to me. And a woman should not want me if I'm not obligated to her. And that obligation is around the nature of God and the natural duties coming up out of that nature. It is a requirement. It is a demand. So the Quran says, and keep your duty to Allah by whom you demand one of another your rights. You don't even realize why your marriages are breaking up. Your marriages are breaking up because a man is making a demand on a woman, not a verbal demand because he cannot articulate what he does not know. But his nature is calling for that comfort. His nature is calling for that quiet of mind. His nature is calling for that consolation. And when the woman does not give it to him, and she cannot give it to him in his present state. There's no woman that can console us, brother, comfort us, and we are not carrying out our duty and responsibility and obligation as a real man. She makes a demand on us, and hers is more vocal than silent. Yours is more silent than vocal, because you have less knowledge of her than she has of you. Women study men. Yes, women study men. They study them by their weaknesses and their strengths. And they 
test men. They have to do this because by nature they are weaker than the man and therefore they must use the weakness of the man as a tool to manipulate the man to get over if the man is not on his post. You can take it or let it alone. There is not a woman in this audience, not a woman listening to the sound of our voice who does not study men. Even children study, little girls study their fathers and they know how to go to their father and get what they want. Even when their father don't want to give it, they make him give it up because they study that man. Is that right? So. When a woman starts getting vocal in the house, brother, it's time for us to listen. Because she speaks her dissatisfaction. And even out of her vocal demand, there is a silent demand that she's making on you that she doesn't know she's making. You think, well, I'm giving her money. I take care of my woman. And yet you find her in bed with somebody else. See, money is not just all. So it's more than just being a good provider. It's more than just giving her a fine home. It's more than buying her a fur coat or a diamond ring or giving her a car to drive. You find her raising hell after you've done all of that. And then you throw up your hands and say, oh man, can't satisfy no woman. And the next time we see you, you have a broken wrist and you out with a man. Because you say, I'm through. I, I just can't handle the woman. <laughs> oh, brother and sister, I don't mean for this to be funny. But it's true. Now, what is it that a woman demands from a man? The Quran says, teaches, listen carefully, that men are the maintainers of women. This is the Quran. The Quran says that man is to be the maintainer of a woman. Do you know that if a good man is not present to upkeep the woman, listen, to continue her in her nature, to preserve, to support, to guide, to control, to manage, all of that is in the term husband. And if you don't want a husband, then don't get one. But when you say, this is my husband, you're saying, this is my manager. This is my guy. This is the man who's cultivating me. This is the man who is developing me. This is the frugal manager or economist of my life. He's taking care of me. He's looking after me. And because of his management, I comfort him. I support him. That's a heck of a word, husband. Well, can't get into all of it today. So you'll just have to tune in next week, same time, same station. And we'll get into part two of the key to a happy and successful married life. And I would love if you come out next week, bring your wives, bring your husbands. Yes, even bring your boyfriend, bring your girlfriend. I'm not talking to the Muslims. <laughs> but if you got them, bring them too. Because, brothers and sisters, until we straighten out male-female relationships, we're not going anyplace. You know, our combined effort elected a black 